this stuff has happened, it's just been like, I've been wanting to do something like this for a while. Part of me, I've always been before YouTube, I've always been so secretive, and not letting people know and stuff like that. But anyway, my hair just is stiff as frick. Anyway, I'm gonna do an honesty video about me. It's gonna be a bunch of stuff that I used to keep. Not really a secret, but I didn't really, I don't go out and tell everyone. I've never been open like that. I've never told people what was on my mind or how I felt about things. Or And there's only a few of my friends who knows some of this stuff and I don't even think I have a friend who knows all of it except for Kristen. I'll be surprised if there's another person that knows everything I'm about to tell you except for Kristen. Here are 10 things that my friends don't even know about me. I'm going to try to name all 10 things from least shocking to most shocking or from least unbelievable to most unbelievable, you know? First thing, and this is the simplest thing, I am allergic to garlic, and I am allergic to Christmas trees. Yes, weird allergies, I know. But, whenever I was a baby, um, actually it was my first Christmas, my mom went out and bought one of those traditional Christmas trees, you know, the ones you go and cut down, or you get from the tree farm, I guess. I don't know, I've never actually been the one after that. Um, and I was in a little playpen on the side by the Christmas tree when my mom walks in and I fall out. It's hard for me to breathe. And so she picks me up and she rushes me to the hospital. And um, whenever we get there, Come to find out, it was the Christmas tree. I'm highly allergic to Christmas trees. My mom raced home, grabbed the tree, decorations and all, ran to our neighbor's house, and literally threw it in the house. Because she didn't want it around me anymore. Which was funny. And the garlic, um, I think I was in freshman high when this happened. We were spending a night at the school, this big school event going on. And I signed up for it and we ordered uh, Domino's Pizza. And um, if you ever had Domino's Pizza, you realize they have like that garlic butter all over the crust. Well, I ate some and that night I thought I had an asthma attack. I was laying down in my little sleeping bag. It was hard to breathe. I sat up, I started puffing my inhaler. I couldn't breathe. My mom had given me some emergency Benadryl in case my inhaler didn't work. So I'm going to take it. So I took it, and a few minutes later, I caught my breath. Again, I thought it was an asthma attack. So I just didn't worry about it. I went home and I explained to mom what had happened. And I said, well, I don't remember breathing anything I'm allergic to, you know? So she sounds like it's, she said it sounds like you went into anaphylactic shock, and I was like, well, what's that? She, like whenever people uh, who are allergic to peanuts and stuff like that go through. So we went and got me tested, and yeah, I'm actually highly allergic to garlic. I will go into anaphylactic shock. Not only that, before I got tested, the reason we decided to test for garlic is because after that event that happened. My papa was making jambalaya, and uh, he asked me to help him cut up vegetables, and garlic was one of them. Whenever I touched it, I started feeling it and cutting it up. I looked at my hands, and they were swollen to the point where I couldn't bend my fingers anymore in red. So we went and got it be tested, and it, was, it has been confirmed I am highly allergic to garlic. This one may come to a shock to some people, depending on who's listening. But, fact about me number two is I actually love country music. I know, it's weird, right? No, 
I actually really do like country music, but it's only certain country music, like some of it aggravates me, but I love my favorite country singer of all time is Martina McBride, and my favorite song is Anyway. Oh my god, I love that song. I will listen to it every single day, at least once a day. It's like my inspiration in the morning, and if you've ever heard it or seen the video, you know what I'm talking about because it's just like, keep on it. Fact number three. What my biggest fandom, I guess, say is, and she actually knows about it because she's one of my friends, but Jekyllin Hyde from Bad Girls Bitch Vlog, and I'll put a link below. If you haven't seen it, you should, but most of my fans know who she is. She is probably the one of the most awesome people that I've ever met. Um, a few years ago, a lot of stuff had happened between me, my family, friends. I'm not going into huge detail, but I was at work one day, I was on my phone, and I was just like, you know what? I watch her videos all the time, I see her at conventions all the time. I'm going to try to say hi to her because I just need someone to talk to. And she, felt, and she seemed like someone that would understand a lot of what I was going through. So I messaged her, not really expecting to get a message back. Because uh, I've messaged a lot of YouTubers and I've been ignored. But not even five minutes passed before I got a message back from her. And I just went ballistic. I was like, oh my god. I was like, I'm a huge fan of, the, of her. And uh, she messaged back. Well, anyway, not only did she message back, but me and her started talking, and she realized all the stuff that I was going through, and she gave me, like, her private Facebook information, and she was just like, you know what, I only give this to people who are really something to me. I'm gonna give it to you, and that made me feel so good about myself. And we met at Louisiana May, and that Louisiana May, I did something that was really really hard for me to do because I'm not the bravest person on the planet but I got up in front of 200 plus people and asked the woman I love to marry me and uh we got a good turnout everyone screamed and was like oh and stuff like that uh some of my friends were even crying because they knew that we were we liked each other stuff like that but I don't think I could have done it without Jacqueline support. I probably would have said I was going to do it, chickened out last minute and did something more private, but Jacqueline was so excited. She wanted to see me be happy, so she was like, go on, go, go on with it, girl. She was like, yeah, do it. And uh, so I did, and now Jacqueline's a really huge part of our lives, and uh, I still watch as many videos. I watch every single video she puts out, but I I don't get to see them when they go, but I do see every single one of them. And words can't describe describe how amazing Jacqueline is in my life. Number five. I used to smoke. Not hot or anything, just regular cigarettes, but Whenever I turned 18, I was working at Sonic, and the job is, if you ever work at Sonic or any fast food restaurant, it is stressful. Stressful, stressful, stressful. Very stressful. I think a cat just meowed outside. Anyway, uh, so I started smoking. Not only because of the stress, but because, and I don't like this about places, if you smoke, you get more breaks than everyone else, because you get smoke breaks. I hate that. I hated it so much, but figured if you can't feed them, join them. I started smoking. Started getting extra breaks. Um, I got addicted. Told everyone, oh, if I wanted to stop, I could. If I wanted to stop, I could. I couldn't stop. I smoked for three years. three years and 
what got me to quit and I don't suggest smoking to anyone and I'm actually I actually tell people they need to quit because of this I started having heart issues I started getting really bad chest pains well while I was driving one day it felt like my heart stopped it started hurting felt like it just pushed I couldn't breathe and then it and I stopped and I was just like, I'm never smoking again because I was, I, that, my mind put smoking with that. I don't even know what that was. Got checked out. The doctor said they don't know what it was. Uh, they said it might have just been my asthma acting up. But, um, yeah, I haven't smoked since. And I think it's been about a year at most since my last cigarette. Um, I'm not sure exactly how long it's been. It might have been less than a year since I quit smoking. But I quit. I'm still working. I will get the urge to smoke, but then I'll remember the chest pain that I had and say, no, I don't want it. Yeah. Fact number six, and it's starting to start getting the most, these are the most shocking, like, no jokes now. These are serious. Uh, I have DID, and whoever doesn't know what DID is, is Dissociative Identity Disorder, which means it's kind of like multiple personality, but people have taken that so many different ways that it's not even funny. Um, I have more than one identity. Usually... I'm just me, which is a mixture of all of them. Kind of like going, like they all work together and for me. But I've actually never told anyone this. And like I said before, Jekyll and Hyde is a huge, I'm a huge fan of and a good friend of mine. And if it wasn't for her, I probably wouldn't be able to tell you all this now. I have multiple identities. One is one I normally am, also known as Silver. Um, I guess the best way to say who this is, is um, my bravery. I was always too scared to be myself. I was always scared to uh, do what I wanted to do because I didn't want to upset anyone. So, Silver, help me do that. Silver is who was brave enough to text Jacqueline. Silver is the one who's brave enough to, for me to ask Kristen to marry me. To me coming out of the closet. If it wasn't for Silver, I'd probably, I wouldn't be the person I am today. Because I'd be hit. Another one. Rogue. And the reason I, uh, the reason he's called Rogue is because I see him as, I used to see him as my guardian angel because I didn't understand what DID was. So I thought he was just my guardian because anytime something bad happened, he'd show up. He first showed up whenever I was six. Something happened, and he showed up to get me out of the situation. Uh, one of the events my brother and sister actually saw him was uh, my mom's boyfriend was fighting with her and I got mad and I started and I ran to fight him. But it wasn't me that fought him. I blacked out. I don't remember much but wrote his full memory about what happened. And Rogue has gotten me out of, out of bad situations. Uh, and I think I probably wouldn't even be alive today if it wasn't for Rogue because of stuff that I've been through that he helped me with. And my last personality, 
I will talk about next. But it's kind of my mixture between my animalistic instincts and my innocence. You can see. Coming up. Fact number seven. I have a persona. And very few people, well actually, a good bit of people know what a persona is. I'm a furry. Um, that one's the hardest one to say because that's the one that's most recently come to conclusion with. I see myself as a hybrid of a wolf and a monkey. The monkey is a symbol of my innocence. Whenever I which I lost at a young age. Uh, whenever I was younger, I used to climb poles and trees, and that even to the point where whenever I played hide and seek in my house, I would climb the hallway walls, and my hiding spot was usually the ceiling. It was amazing at tag because none of the kids could jump up that high. <laughs> I Me, mean, I would literally have my back up against the ceiling with my hands and feet pressed to each of the walls. And that's where I hid most of my time, most of the time. Spent time up there, I would go up there just if I'm bored, you know, I'm gonna climb on the wall. Uh, my mom couldn't keep me down at one point. She probably, I'm sure she was like, no, you're gonna fall, you're gonna hurt yourself after a while. My eye would, that's where I was, was the ceiling. Oh, <laughs> uh, the wolf is kind of gross help. I love wolves. Uh, if you ever research how a wolf functions, they're one of the only animals that kill in revenge. I was kind of weird for the, being the first thing where you said I like it, but it's true. Um, they have a pack, they respect each other, they respect the alpha. I'll probably never be an alpha, but uh, they just a wolf pack probably is the best resemblance of a true family because they're there for each other, you know? And being a wolf, I actually get strength at night and energy at night, like during the, the day, like right now is the time, and you don't know how bad I want to crawl into this bed and just sleep all day. But at night, it's like I can't sleep. I'm up, I'm running around, um, cleaning or um, on my furry forums, talking to other people who are like me, or um. It's actually gotten to the point though where like whenever I sleep, I curl up to sleep, I don't sleep stretched out. Uh, whenever I was younger, whenever I was scared, I would make a den to sleep in. I would take all my pillows and blankets and stuff and make like a little fort and I'd curl up and I'd sleep in that. That's how I felt protected. Some people think it's crazy, some people think it's really weird, which is why I'm always so scared to say it, but it's true. And actually, in a couple years, not this coming up Louisiana May, but the next one, if, the, if it's done, I'm actually creating a personal suit, and I will be presenting it at Louisiana May. So, I'm kind of excited about that. I am ominous, which means uh, some ominous have a dominant religion. I guess mine would probably be Catholic because that's what I was raised as. But being ominous, you have full respect for all the other religions. Uh, you don't push it. This has belief and respect for all religions. It means there's a, I believe in, best way to say it, I believe in a little bit of everything. Really religious people don't believe in evolution. I believe God created evolution to make us better. Uh, because the world's always gonna change as we become smarter, 
things change in the world, so we have to change with it. Whenever we first created, I 
as well today. But I can kind of not really see the sunlight. You can't really control it as much. I know the signs to look for to keep myself from going into an asthma attack. You know, if I'm doing this, if my chest feels not constricted, but if I feel like there's a lump in my chest, then I'm probably going to go to an asthma attack to get out of the area. Stuff like that. Or pump my inhaler. Younger, my asthma was so bad that um, I, used, I was on a breathing machine three times a day. And you know what a breathing machine is? You take this mask and then you press it. You press it, you turn the And it, you put this meditation in the tube part of the mask. There's a tube that sits out with this. Uh, a tube connects to it from this machine. The machine fills it up with this air. I'm not sure what air it was, but it makes the stuff evaporate. And as it evaporates, it puts up the evaporating smoke into your face. I had.
I was white because I had been outside, I had been at work, none of it. And all the way up till then, person, I thought she was straight. So I kept on saying, friends is good enough for me, friends is good enough for me. I can live my life with as being her friend, that's good enough for me, I'm happy. I get to see her. I don't want to say anything, upset her, make her run away, make her not want to see me again. I'm happy. Well, at that moment, I thought to myself, if I die here right now and never tell her how I feel, then I'm not going to be happy with myself. If I die, she'll never know how I feel. And I said, I'm dying anyway if she... I think I felt like I was dying anyway. this way since the moment I met her I told her that her eyes were the first thing that I caught caught mine when I first met her and all I could think was how beautiful they were and I had fully expected her to take back you and it's gross or I don't think I don't think I'm going to be coming over anymore or something like that, you know? I thought I made her feel awkward. But she takes it back that she felt the same way. She takes it back that that she's never felt that way about a girl before. And that she'd be really happy to be with me. After that, I started getting better. I don't know what it was, and my friends, most of my friends say that she saved my life. I really believe it. Anyway, sorry about the sob story, let me go on to the last time I almost died, and that would be about a year ago. Maybe a little bit more. I was at my friend Jess, Jess's house, and Kristen was there. Me and her work together, so I was gonna go straight to work from her house. And um, it was really nice. Next morning, I realized my work shirt is in my car. It's been raining, so I walk out, go to my car, barefooted in my pajamas. Rain pouring, rain has been pouring down. I get my work shirt while I walk back, and there's a slippery spark on her. in on it saying don't fall <laughs> you know like you know those moments where you're just like I know I'm about to fall right now well this was one of those moments I slipped and I landed on the back of my head like this the ground impacted my head and then the rest of my body hit if you have never hit your head before I don't wish this on my worst enemy because in the few seconds that I was down, felt like hours to me. Uh, I could not tell you who I was, what I was. I couldn't tell you if I was human. I couldn't tell you if I was a leaf. I couldn't tell you if I was a tree. I couldn't even tell you what all those words meant. The only thing that I could comprehend in that moment was pain, excruciating, agonizing pain throughout my entire body. So bad that my fist stayed like this and it was stretched out and my whole body was like convulsing. Uh, she kept 
kept me awake, you know, I kind of fell asleep. I really thought that if she didn't know to keep me awake, I probably would have died right there. How bad I was hurting. No, I, ju I just wanted to sleep. I didn't want to ever wake up. They rushed me to the hospital, and the hospital told me I had a mild concussion. They say mild because there wasn't actually any... They didn't, it didn't show any brain damage. Uh, concussion because I actually blacked out for a good 20 seconds. Uh, I'll have headaches still, slight headaches in the back of my head. Uh, whenever my mom, my mom was there at the hospital, whenever she looked at it, she said that it was like a hamburger meat. My entire scalp was crushed and bruised. It hurt. They couldn't touch it. They slightly touch it. It felt like an open wound. There's pictures on YouTube, on Facebook, on my Facebook page of me in the hospital. I'm in my pajamas, I'm showing them all different bands and tubes they had, and they had different shots and things like that. So yeah, six different times that I knocked on death's door and ran away. <laughs> so anyways. Number 10. This is one of the hardest ones to talk about, but I can't talk about it. I was molested and raped as a child. Well, I was molested would have been the best way to say it. If I was raped, I don't truly remember everything that happened. But I will tell you what I do.
He always said that. I never understood what he meant. I thought he really, I thought he was really talking about the house. But I was a little bit more. <laughs> um.
like to do is contact me. Like I said, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. Um, on, you can email me. Shoot, I think my phone number is on Facebook. You can text me. I don't care. I will talk to you. Because I understand what it feels like. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.